Welcome to Comic-Con. I mean, the insanity of this. What do you think makes this such an interesting place to visit? Um, well, I think the fans here are so generous and warm and like they're just so full of passion for the things that they love and that's uh, such an amazing cross-section of humanity and it's also the place where, you know, you get to see a cosplay mashup of Frozen and Star Wars so there's like uh, Slave Elsa and Han Solo Princess Anna and like that stuff is just priceless as far as I'm concerned. If you had the opportunity to actually dress up and walk around incognito, who would you want to be private? The first time I came to Comic-Con I actually did that. Uh, there was a writer uh, for some publication uh, that uh, wanted to do like a, an experience and uh, <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. Um, but I made him dress up as Bert, and I dressed up as Ernie, and we walked the floor of Comic-Con. And it was a sight to see. <laughs> but let me ask you, you brought, you're bringing the movie Trolls, and you know, once again, now Hollywood, which used to kind of base its films on classic pieces of literature or great stage plays, is dipping into a fantastical world. What makes Trolls an interesting story to tell cinematically? Well, I remember actually the director saying that one of the great things about trolls as a concept was that they don't have a, a, a mythology. You know, there's like there are lots of toys that come with their own backstories, and getting to create the mythology and the the storyline from scratch uh, and tell you know, like to look at a troll with its arms outstretched and its big eyes and go like, where do you come from? Uh, really sparked their imagination. So. Um, I think it's cool that we got to uh, just create this kind of psychedelic 70s uh, vibe and create these characters from scratch. So uh, it was actually a really interesting opportunity to take uh, toys that people know and love and create something for them because in a way they're kind of a blank slate. And Justin, you helped make them sing. So what was the musical kind of uh, backstory for you? I mean, where did you start? Well, I think what we wanted to do uh, was make it feel, you know, make... It's a musical, you know, essentially, but make it feel modern. Um, so what do we do? We do a bunch of covers of old songs now. Um, um, so, you know, with I wrote three or four, uh, four originals. And then in covering the, you know, I, I don't know, there's a sort of, um, you know, there's sort of this cachet thing about having, you know, Simon and Garfunkel and Earth, Wind and & Fire and Diana Ross and... Lionel Richie, I mean, we're and doing our own interpretations of them, but the way they happen in the movie, they're either incredibly funny or incredibly heartfelt, and they and they ironically they move the story forward. And I don't know, I, I think that was kind of a cool uh, little cachet thing for for the movie and its music. Thank you.